he's to keep that. Like he was uh, mostly reined in. He was allowed to let himself loose on one part of the movie, which was a crucial part of the movie. That that was a crucial part. That was the uh, hotel scene when they were in between bouts. Yeah, and uh, his son had finally got what he wanted, was to get Dad drunk. But he didn't, when he got dad drunk, as they said, he really discovered that wasn't what he really wanted because he felt sorry. It was the only time in the entire movie he felt sorry for anybody except for feeling guilty in another scene about the death of a, of a Marine. But you almost, yeah, you see the vulnerable side of him. Yeah, he did feel that he, did, he pushed the envelope too far to get what he wanted. But, the, you know, uh, Melville's Moby Dick plays a very important role in the movie, which I'm guessing... They didn't really think was that important a thing until people started pointing out, uh, you know, like in the drunk scene at the end, he's doing. Um, he, he, they said he's not Mel, he's not a Captain Ahab. He is Moby Dick. He's the great white well that's basically consumed everybody mm -hmm. and will never give an inch. Which is an Irish father. An Irish father, you not know, you know, you know, you know, an Irish father. This was an Irish. Uh, trainer, you know, an athletic trainer who basically can't give an inch because if he does, I mean, like you're telling his son, um, he said, "You're in my, you're going to be in my house. You're going to follow my rules. You're going to eat. You're not going to eat this crap. This is for yeah. old guys and people that are out of shape." That's right. You're going to live here, and I'm going to follow everything you're, you're doing. And um, pass me over what you have in your pockets because you sound like a Morocco when you walk through the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was it because you know his son took drugs to keep himself going. Actually, I'm guessing he's popping steroids and everything else too. I know. Because I... he is really overly muscled. And well, he, he brings one out and he says, and then Nick Nolte says, I heard more than one. Yeah. And then, I... <laughs> Yeah, and then the, Pass it over, I heard three. Yeah, there was a ching, ching, ching when you came through the door. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, but, you know, Nolte, if he, um, they're not doing, they're not doing uh, O'Connor for an award, and they, they know there's no chance of the two uh, foreign actors, because they're going to have, they, they said it's a lock, the foreign nomination is going to go to the gentleman who was an artist, because he's winning all the best actors awards. Yeah, so but it's Nolte. Supporting actor Nolte, Nolte. Because is, Nolte is owed one. Yeah. He's owed one for 45 years of work. I mean, this guy's been in the movie business since he was in his early 20s. And where we were, that was probably one of the largest screenings that we've yeah, been in. There were it, a lot it was of the there. largest screening. There was a, uh, I mean, it was the first screening we got into early because the room was so big and they knew that they, uh, they had like uh, seven, eight hundred guild members that had responded in a room for a thousand people. Still, there was only um, uh, like two rows of people that weren't guild members in the whole place. So out of those, I mean, Nick Nolte, we're familiar with him as an actor, Tom Hardy, who plays the son. Tom Hardy was also in Band of Brothers. He plays the Italian that basically makes it through the entire movie. Um, when, you, uh, when you see him fight in that intensity he has, oh, I mean, God. he almost looks like a crazy person. Well, no, he's, um, what was it, they called him animals. Ah, yeah, yeah, he would fit into that He category. was an animal. I mean, if you look at his face and the yeah, eyes, but intensity. This guy was so far out of everybody else's class range that they'd have, they'd have never let him fight in the bouts to begin with because there was no way that a guy that basically, it was like he'd, he'd just, he just pummel somebody to death if he had to. Yeah, even all those ones that he... In, in fact, the one when he... Oh, actually, we're not going to tell you everything. No. Okay, we're, this is not a scene. Okay, no, but there is... There, there's definitely some scenes you have to see when he first gets noticed, because he really does. It's like he goes into um, into the ring against these guys that have been very successful, and he basically pummels them within, he just, he just, within, within seconds. seconds. They've never seen anybody get knocked out with one punch, mm -hmm. because he is... He is an angry. This is what the whole bit is. It's Cain and Abel, folks. The good brother, the bad brother, the, the which basically isn't the way you think because the good brother is Tommy, the bad brother, and the bad brother is Brian, the good brother. <laughs> I know it does kind of trick the people. Yeah, doesn't it? it is. Uh, you know, and uh, Brian does not have the abilities of his of his older brother. Period. And he's actually jealous of it. Yeah. When you hear him talking totally to Totally jealous about of it. the attention. And these are both athletes. I mean, like, uh, they got a thing in the, move, in the movie which basically where they're showing the brothers' wins as athletes. And they're almost... Actually, younger brother had more wins than older brother. Mm -hmm. And he's jealous of older brother because the attention... Well, the attention given to older brother, 
because the older brother wasn't able to compete with the younger brother when they were younger. Mm. See, that's the whole trick. He, they were great, both junior Olympians, but they, one, the uh, older one was not in the league. And guess what happened in the movie? What? The older brother, he was so far out of the younger brother's league, that the younger brother should, there's no way on earth the younger brother could beat this guy in a match with you. There's was, no way. I mean, I mean, everything, okay, in the movie, uh, Egerton playing Brian is nothing but a human punching bag for every single person that he goes against, including his own wife. Well, and as they said, well, anything can happen yeah. in Sparta. No, but it's, no, and they said on any given day you can win, you can beat anyone, but he's beating people that are, that are, that are all out of his class because they expected him out the first round. They, he couldn't have, he could not have lasted because, you mean, if, we're looking at the guy's face. This, yeah, first round, first fight. This guy is dying in every single bout. I mean, yeah. there's no acting to it. He's just playing out, out of his league, trying to do this stuff, because what the guys are all, when he puts them so-called in a submission hold, they're stronger than he is and more athletic than he is, and he's holding on for his life to, so they don't have to come back and do it again, because they really are putting an effort into this role. I mean, uh, yeah, the natural yeah. athlete, I would say, is Tom Hardy. Yeah. Because this guy, he looks and acts every inch like he is a mean SOB. And he does look, it, you know. Yeah, he does. He looks like he could put a fist, well, like they said, he, he tore the door off a tank. And they said, yeah, but he's, he's not well known. They said, for Christ's sake, he tore the door off a tank. You know, what okay. more than you have I know, to when be. you ask him, he says, what am I supposed to do, let him drown? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that no, was his response. No, he is, a, he is a worthless SOB that I knew from the... Okay, from the instant I found out he had a brother, I knew how that was going to go. Mm -hmm. And it goes exactly like I knew it, because younger brother could not beat older brother with one arm tied behind his back, because older brother would not give in. Older brother wanted to make a point that I'm better than my younger brother. Mm -hmm. And you think it got, when you're trying to make a point, you know, it, it, it had nothing to do with his father at that time. It all had to do with the point, I, got, I have a $5 million payday. I'm going to go to jail because he was a deserter, folks. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to beat the hell out of my younger brother to show dad that I am better, that he should have paid more attention to me. Yeah, well, younger brother, well, he didn't, you didn't, my dad didn't pay attention to me. He did. It's because younger brother wasn't as good as the older brother. He never was as good as the older mm -hmm. brother. And that older brother knew it, and the older brother just simply was going to beat him until he was dead to show the world. I should have got all the real attention, not the younger one. Well, actually, they did talk about how, one of, in the Q&A, somebody commented about how all of a sudden the brutality, when the two brothers went against each other, suddenly... That was because they were getting all the aggression out of their system that they'd had for years. Look, the trouble is, they're Irish folks. I mean, the guy's O'Connor. He knows the Irish fight with one another. I mean, you should have seen the battles that my grandmother would have with with my grandfather and no, my father. No, but suddenly father. you feel different because the other ones is fight, but the other... No, they were trying, it's like okay. you're fighting against the brother, um, and how can they do that? Basically, they were... Older brother was trying to kill the younger brother. That's the whole bit. It was just... He wanted to kill him. It's just mm -hmm. simple. Because it was all rage that wasn't there with the other guys. Oh, yeah. That, it the was. other guys, it was just get, knock him out, get out of the ring. But with older brother, it was, I'm going to beat the hell out of him for five rounds. Mm -hmm. And younger brother had already lost after the first three rounds. It, it was over. He'd lost it. Mm -hmm. All younger bro all the older brother had to do was just hang on. And he won because there was only five rounds. And on the points, he'd already won the battle. Mm -hmm. And the only way he could win the battle was for him to submit, which he would have never done. Never. Never in a million years because he, he ended up the loser. Totally. He lost everything. Lost his freedom. Lost... Uh, making up for the death of one of his friends, lost everything by submitting. There was nothing for him to gain. Other than the fight. Yeah. There was the only, if he didn't win, he ended up the loser that he'd been all his life. Unless he thought that by losing, his brother won and they kept the house. No. Well, actually, he didn't even know about all of that. No, he didn't know about all of that. He just, um, all he knew is that, okay, if he lost... He lost. He get. He lost everything that he had been. He, you know, he'd already screwed it up with his father. And if he submits, he basically admits that younger brother was always better than he was, mm -hmm. which is why he's so angry. So it was a wrong-headed ending that I knew where it was going before it went because that's the standard Hollywood ending, that the underdog must always win.
The underdog yeah. was the brother, the old younger brother. Yeah. Yeah. So isn't that something? Mm. You know, the guy that should win always loses. Well, you know a guy that can walk into a ring and knock a person out with one blow? Would have done that. That, that and he's basically, he, he's not, he didn't knock his brother out because he was punishing him, just pound, just beating him to death, and then he let him off at the end of every round. Mm -hmm. He eased off at the end of every round so his brother wouldn't submit. Ah. Yeah. And then he comes back in the fourth round with a broken arm. Uh, well, even after he, dislo oh, no, he dislocated, dislocated his shoulder. shoulder, even after he dislocated his shoulder in the third round, he came back once he got up with a flurry to basically win the round again. He could have just punched him out and got it over with. That's right. Instead, you know, he, he, he got up to the fourth round to punish brother more because with one arm he was like a monster, a crazy monster with one arm fighting and he was still outclassing his younger mm -hmm. brother. And then he go into the fifth round where younger brother was. He said, "You have to knock him out to win. You have to finish him off to win." That was the, uh, the, the uh, you know, the coach. She cannot win and leave. Remember the house. She can't. Oh, remember? Yeah, the other one. He says, "You won't survive." That's right. He says, "If you want, if you want a chance, you got to knock him out." But he couldn't. There was an impossibility because it wicks. He couldn't knock him out because he wouldn't go out, and he couldn't make him submit. The only way. That he could win the fight was if the younger brother, or the older brother, threw the fight, and he did in the very last thing. So that was it. You know, I knew it was headed that direction. A typical crappy uh, ending like you generally have. And I know people cheer for the underdogs, but you know, when their brothers, it's kind of. I know, but it's not like Rocky. Rocky was an underdog because Rocky was um, not. Uh, he was not. Uh, he was a boxer, but he had never been no, you know, a good boxer, but he hadn't basically had a good trainer, good everything. He just simply hadn't performed in that rarefied atmosphere, where the younger brother had been in that atmosphere. And Oh, that's true. He he'd been, been there for years, and he wasn't any good at it. So, but, I so mean... Have we beat this movie enough? Oh, we beat it to death. Most of the people out there beat it to death. They said it was good performances. If you mean... It, the, the three, the two brothers are really good. I mean, really good. But um, they're you know, very believable in their role. They're believable. They believe that they really hate one another, and they believe they hate. But they said so the only thing that we have in common is we hate our father. Mm. But they had nothing else in common. I mean, even though they're in the same sport, they have nothing in common because one is so superior to the other. But um, I mean, like I mean, the movie has been out and it's it's back out again. Because it's, it is it's expected. I mean, at the moment, it does. There is an expectation that Noli will get an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor up against George Clooney. Clooney has an Oscar already, and I think Mr. Uh, Christoph Weiss has an Oscar already. Pretty Christoph does. So you're not got you know, you guess that they figure 45 years and Rooney and Noli's never going to get another chance. Yeah, but age. if you look, if you compare the performances. His performance versus the other ones. Well, he's actually he he is just he he's actually he's an old man, and the others are still basically all younger men. You know, they're uh, snobs, they're elitist, they're you know. Yeah, but bad. isn't it easier to play a snob or an elitist than? But it's just, okay, it's, he, he's playing a character that just just nobody likes. He's totally despicable to everybody, but mm -hmm. he is good at what he does, and they know he's a good. And you he, know, he is very good. They all you know like he's the. In the, the it all, seems to me like a more difficult role than either Christoph Waltz or Clooney. Like yeah, George that's Clooney right. In the other movies. Yeah, you know, because they're just playing, they're playing characters that they have played before. Whereas Noldy hasn't really played a totally despicable senior citizen. Oh, that's a good way to put it. So, so he he should be on our list as favored for winning an Oscar because the way it works in categories. If you if, if you don't get it one time and you got it and they deserved it, you eventually get it. And uh, it's, it's just like um, I heard when um, you know in Lawrence of Arabia when Peter O'Toole they give him a special Oscar a couple of years ago. He said he didn't want the Oscar. He said I'm not finished making movies yet unless you know something I don't know. Whereas <laughs> Nolte's career is basically almost over. Yeah, but there's some of these actors that are acting well into their. Yeah, I know, but he's not that type of actor. He's fading, so mm -hmm. and the fading is is evident. Is evident. He's there. He's really sharp mentally. Yeah, he. But is. he's no longer physically. He. I don't think he can carry himself much longer in the film industry. 
Well, actually, this is one of those ones that if you're a Nick Nolte fan, you really should. He, he has a, a great performance. You should go see this movie just to see Nick Nolte. Yeah, to see what could be his best and last performance. I mean, maybe there's always... I know what Richard Harris got an, an Academy nomination for uh, the one... He was getting ready to retire. He got an Academy Award nomination for playing a, a character in a Clint Eastwood Western. He was going to retire after that. And then he decided, well, no, I'm still good. I'm going to continue it on. So he got another nomination about five years later. But he only had a career that lasted another two or three years beyond that because age just simply had got to him. It gets to most actors, you know, because they can't. It's, it's got to do with the fact that you may be able to do something, but insurance basically won't allow you. I think Noldy is reaching that point where the insurance is, no, is it, you know, he's, He's, he's younger than I am and looks like he's 90 years old. But then talking. Borgnine's still out there. Yeah, but Ernest Borgnine basically still bounces around. Yeah. Borgnine true. may be 94 years old, but Borgnine acts like he's a guy in his 60s. And one of the more interesting statements last um, here in the Q&A was when Nolte said Hepburn advised him that actors should never get married. Because they give all their love to their craft. And he said, well, you should have paid attention to that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's been married a few times. So, but, uh, no, I mean, I, would you pay to go see the movie? I would watch it on TV. Yeah, it's a yeah. good, it's a really a great... I, I would watch it. It's just like a lot of things we've seen lately. It's a great made-for-TV movie. A really a great made-for-TV movie, but not mm -hmm. a great movie. So until next time, this is Old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For more information... You can go to www.montybubble.net on the net. And wherever you watch, you subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. Oh, and listen to our, listen and watch our other reviews. Yeah. Or read about them, read them too. Read because these reviews are all going up on Yahoo, folks. And thank you once again for over 40 million links on the Internet.